Hello, welcome back to my haunted library. It's Regina. I'm back and happy to report that I'm feeling so much better than I did the last time I was here. For my last video, I spent a couple days down the shore, had a wonderful time. There's nothing like salty sea air to really cleanse the sinuses and to just make you feel better. It was beautiful. The weather was mild. I mean, it was a little rainy. I actually took my shoes off and went, waited, didn't swim. I'm not that crazy. The surf was actually very rough. I waded into the surf and the pups really had a good time playing on the beach. And yeah, it was a really nice getaway. So now I'm back and uh, getting ready to go through a very busy period where I'm back at work on a play at my theater. So I thought I would get a video before all that madness started. So I will be doing the second part of my, or the third part rather, of my uh, Gothic romance books, but I'm gonna do that at the end of the month when I do my wrap up. I, I'm gonna try to host my first live, but I, I'm not gonna be able to do it in my library here because I don't have like good Wi-Fi. So I might uh, do it in another location like my living room. But uh, that will be probably the second Sunday in March with my other co-hosts. So I'm excited to put that together. I will post about it on my community page on my YouTube channel if you want to check it out. Should be fun. So what's going on? Okay, well, the Gothic Hearts Reading Challenge is winding down and it's been really great. I've read a lot of great books. I wanted to do a, another BIPOC pick. So I read Music of the Night by Angela J. Ford. Music of the Night is a complete standalone novel inspired by Phantom of the Opera, perfect for fans of dark and steamy romance. Okay, I don't know. I had a fan in here for a while, but this was so steamy if, if i read uh, another uh, sentence about a, a glistening throbbing nub i thought i was going to faint i mean it was like woo! i don't usually read this kind of stuff not that i'm a prude about it not at all if you've read some of my novels you know that's not true but uh it was like I mean, I was like, seriously, like, I needed a fan. Um, I, I wrote to my, um, my co-hosts about this and they were giggling. So yeah, I thought this was very enjoyable. Let's just put it that way. It was definitely more fantasy than Gothic. And then for my last pick for my Gothic Hearts Reading Challenge, I'm reading, uh, or I was going to read. I'm not sure if I'm going to go the distance with this book because look at this. The Mysteries of Odolfo by Anne Radcliffe. I've had this on my Kindle forever, and then I found this at the Strand Bookstore. I'm not really wild about that cover, guys. I don't know, what do you think? It's kind of weird. I started reading this last night, and I got through the first chapter, and my eyes were crossing, because not only is, th this is four volumes, and not only is it long, but the print. Now at my age, I need some pretty heavy duty reading glasses. The print is so tiny. It is that, uh, I would say definitely uh, gothic and very like what the early types of romance that you find, gothic romance, um, lots of pastoral settings and this type of thing. So I'm not gonna give up on it. My goal is to get through before the end of the week is to, uh, or before you know February's over, is to read the first volume, which is like 170 pages of very, tiny print. I think I can handle that. But then after reading Music of the Night, I thought maybe I will swap the Radcliffe, if I really can't handle it, for Phantom of the Opera, the original book, which is not that long and I've never read it. So I think that would definitely uh, be a gothic romance and it'd be written before, published before 1950, which was part of my criteria. Anyway, I think I might do that. Or not. I will do a reading vlog for a uh, the Anne Radcliffe and post it on my Patreon and just see how I do. So I'm going to read a little more today and talk about it in a short video and just see how it goes. So another thing I wanted to discuss today is I'm putting together my Lenten TBR. So for 40 days of Lent, and I'm missing a few days because I'm still doing this Gothic stuff, I'm going to read, well, Gothic is really fits in with this whole world too. I'm going to read some uh, religious themed or Catholic themed books and horror. I actually went to mass on 
Ash Wednesday down at the shore. There was like one Catholic church, I guess, that was open for the entire island. So there were a lot of people there. It was a Franciscan ordered Catholic church and one of those like 60s ones with like very modern, which is not my type of church that I prefer, but it was really beautiful. And then it had beautiful music. So kind of thinking about what books I want to read for from Lent. Um, and uh, I came up with a few. So let's take a look. So first of all, I decided I'm going to read, reread while I'm re-listening to the audiobook of Lord of the Rings. So when I took my nice walk in the country park with Lucky last week, I was listening to Fellowship of the Ring. I bought uh, the uh, audiobooks. I've read the books, I've watched the movies, and listening to the audiobook while I was walking through the country. Well, there's a lot of walking in that book and a lot of eating, but it was really lovely to be in the country and listening to that. So, so Tolkien, why did I in include Tolkien? Well, Tolkien was a Catholic and uh, I found this quote where he described Lord of the Rings as fundamentally religious and Catholic work, unconsciously so at first, but consciously in the revision. And I can see where the, some of those themes are present. So yeah, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to kind of revisiting this. I was not a Tolkien fan. I came to this really late and only read it a couple years ago. I, I had read The Hobbit when I was a kid and I had seen the movies or at least some of them, but I was never like a Tolkien fan. Now I'm starting to really understand it a little better. So moving on to the next one. So this one is more of a recommendation because I just reread this. And that is uh, Holy Blood, Holy Grail. Some of you may know this as the source book for the Da Vinci Code. And I think actually that Dan Brown was sued by these authors. I might be wrong about that. I didn't research that, sorry. If you know, let me know in the comments below. So there are three authors, Michael Bajent, Richard Lee, and Henry Lincoln. There was a lot of research that went into this book. Now. I think in some ways the Da Vinci Code kind of made this book, it cheapened this book. I really didn't like the Da Vinci Code. When it came out, like everyone I knew was reading it and I was being a little bit of a snob because I was like, well, have you read Holy Blood, Holy Grail? Because that's where the story started. This is not a novel, but it has theories that may be, some people may consider fictional. What I really liked about this book and I got a lot out of it the second time uh, listening to the audiobook is all of the history about the Cathars and the Knights Templar and the Masons and all of that stuff I found fascinating. When I got into the bloodline stuff, I was a little bit like, okay. When I was in the south of France, I mean, over 10 years ago, I visited some of these sites that were in this book, that were mentioned in this book, and it was really pretty cool. So I recommend this book for anyone who's really into history of those secret societies. And it's, it's very good. And you might even be able to find the audiobook on YouTube for free. I don't mean to insult the Dan Brown books. I know a lot of people love those books and I never watched the movie, but it just felt a little bit like I did read the Da Vinci Code and it, it, it didn't go into the depths of this book. Actually, this book, this not this copy, but my original copy, I, I had found someone had like loaned it to one of my sisters and it had, there was like a note on it, like a sticky note that said, do not read this book. This is an evil book. So of course I had to read it, but uh, yeah, it's good. Let me know if you've read that one, because I don't know if a lot of people know about that book uh, as being the source material for the Dan Brown stuff. And here's another book that uh, came out during that whole uh, Da Vinci Code. Uh, when everyone was reading it, it was like a big deal. It was I don't know if you remember that, but God, when did that book and movie come out? Like late 90s, early aughts maybe? But anyway, you saw a lot of books like this. Um, this one is, I think this is a, maybe like a Barnes and Noble book. Bloodline of the Holy Grail, the hidden lineage of Jesus revealed. This is by Lawrence Gardner. This has a lot of great art. It does go into like the bloodline and uh, I checked for my name, <laughs> it wasn't on there. But uh, but you never know, I mean, think about it. We're all probably related to each other when you really get down to it. I really like some of the artwork. This is a beautiful painting of Mary Magdalene. And it also has a lot of pre-Raphaelite art, which is my favorite type of art. 
other, or painting. And I put some other books off my shelf that are kind of related. This one I read last year. I think I read this last year for, for Lent. Uh, Ash Wednesday by Chet Williamson. This was really good. I know Batilda did a video for this one, a review called Prime Evil, Ed Kelleher and Harriet Vidal, Prime Evil. That was uh, fun, like a fun read, fun horror read. This book I read too as well. So I'm not rereading these. I'm just kind of showing what I have and then I'll be reading some of them. This is called The Religion by Nicholas Conde. This is a, uh, a book that, it's a horror novel thriller about like the, the Santeria religion in New York. This, there's a movie, the book was okay. The movie is called The Believers that came out in the 80s with Martin Sheen is really good. It's a really good horror movie. Okay, what else? Um, ah, this one I started, so I probably will continue with this. This is Hostage to the Devil by Malachi Martin. This is a true account of, well, I'm gonna put that in quotes. True ac account of uh, several exorcisms. This is really good so far. It's very dense, so I didn't get too far. I'm, I think I'm on the second exorcism, and it, it's very, very well written. Uh, Malachi Martin was a Jesuit, and I guess, I don't know, I'm going to do a little more uh, research into him because this, you know, this, was, this came out after The Exorcist. I mean, it's kind of like advertised as part of that, so the marketing for this was like, the true awesome account of possession and exorcism of five living Americans documented by a former Jesuit. So it's kind of sensationalized in that way. But the, st and, and the cover, you know, you got like your devil there. But the, um, the stories themselves are pretty serious. And I noticed in the appendix, there is the Roman rite of exorcism that you, uh, if you need one, now with Batilda around, it's always good to have this handy. But if you need it, it's here, but you need a priest. So the Roman ritual of exorcism. It gives you the whole thing, you know, the power of Christ compels you, all this, all the Latin, pretty cool. So if you need an exorcism, it's good to have this book handy with your, your exorcism kit your holy water, your crucifix, everything you need. I don't mean to be glib about this stuff. I am a practicing Catholic, but I, I do have a sense of humor about this, so just so you know. And the last time I added myself as a practicing Catholic, I did get a couple weird comments, of people kind of lecturing me about theology. Please don't put that in my comments. That's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to argue religion with anyone. You know, you do you, let me do me, and uh, we'll all get along. So, uh, yeah, this is... I'm looking forward to digging more into this. Here is another book that has a religious theme, and this is Legion by William Peter Blatty. I'm pretty sure that Exorcist Three is based on this book, almost positive. I watched Exorcist Three again recently, and it was really kind of creepy. It was, it got under my skin. I thought it would be really kind of like silly, but really kind of creeped me out and he directed it it's not a great movie but it has some really great moments and great performances like george c scott and brad dorif you know good good stuff so i will probably definitely <laughs> read this and what else did i pull off my shelves oh oh this book i've never read but i've seen the movie and it's one of it, it's one of the, the most horrifying films i've ever seen in my life and this is called the devils of ludon by Aldous Huxley. This is like an old copy. I've just, I don't know, I found it in a thrift store. My dad had this book in our house growing up, and, but it was a paperback version that had, they would have like stills from the movie in the middle, black and white stills. And the, the photos were horrifying. And then when I finally saw the movie, I was absolutely freaked out. Now I, I do have a, um, bootleg DVD of The Devils. The quality's really bad, but now you can watch it on Shudder. I haven't rewatched that movie in a while, but it stars uh, Vanessa Redgrave and Oliver Reed, directed by Ken Russell. And Ken Russell, I absolutely love his films, but he can really go over the top sometimes with some 
disturbing imagery. Let's put it that way. Uh, his film Gothic is one of my favorite movies. I love that movie. And uh, I might rewatch that again. Oh my gosh, I was so upset that Julian Sands, I don't think they found him yet. I mean, it's, it's kind of given up hope. Went missing in a s snowstorm in California. He, he was a, I, I say he was, I'm speaking in the past tense, but it doesn't look very good. Uh, he went uh, hiking. And apparently he's a very experienced mountaineer. And there was a bad storm and avalanches and all kinds of things. They haven't found him yet. It's really heartbreaking. But he's in a gothic. Anyway, but back to the devils. Uh, this is based on a true story that happened when a priest is horribly... Uh, tortured and burned at the stake for being a heretic in this small French town. And so it's based on historical fact. The Ken Russell film is highly disturbing. Vanessa Redgrave plays the mother superior of this convent and she gives the creepiest, most wonderful performance that you can possibly imagine. She is uh, an incredible actress and I've, I had the, uh, opportunity to see her perform on Broadway and she was mesmerizing and you know I know she's a kind of kind of controversial figure because of her politics which I don't get involved in I'm just responding to her performance and and it was great so I don't know this book is probably going to be a little dry but I might dip into it and then also I pulled out I really have a very nice copy of an an author that I am curious about, and I don't know a lot about him, but I know there is a lot there, and that is Dennis Wheatley's uh, To the Devil, a Daughter. There's also a film version of this with uh, Nastasia Kinski that I watched a long time ago, and I recently watched uh, an adaptation of one of his novels, uh, The Devil Rides Out, I think it's called, <laughs> If I can remember, it's a uh, Christopher. I just watched it last week. Uh, Christopher Lee is in it, and it's like a, a Hammer film from the '60s, but it was really good. So um, I would I want to read this. I, I want to get to know this author because I know he was uh, very knowledgeable about the occult, and of course that interests me. I might start with this. I'm not sure. I haven't really put it together. And was there anything else that I missed um, that I wanted to mention? I mean, of course, The Exorcist is a good uh, book for this kind of uh, topic of exorcism, and, but I've read that a lot, so I'm not going to read that this time around. I mentioned uh, Ken Russell's The Devils on Shudder, if you want to check that out. I, I do recommend it. Just know that what you're getting into is, is very disturbing. I mean, it's, it, there's like an extensive torture scene. I don't even know if I would consider this a horror film. I guess it, it is kind of considered a horror film, but um, it's scary. But the film is a, is a masterpiece. I mean, it's beautiful. The, the art direction, I mean, there's this whole crazy scene where these nuns uh, become possessed or at least think they're possessed and like tear all their, they tear their habits off and are running around naked and it's really crazy. I must have blessed myself 10 times the first time I watched that movie. And another movie I wanted to mention has nothing to do with horror, but it's a great film, a, a, a great Catholic film, uh, and a really beautiful film all the way around. I, I've seen this movie several times, and I just rewatched it because it's very meaningful to me. I had a very uh, moving experience, kind of like a spiritual experience, watching this film for the first time. And that is The Mission, which uh, came out in 1986. It's a Roland Joffe film starring, it's a historical film, so it's based on historical fact. It uh, stars Robert De Niro and Jeremy Irons. And Jeremy, two of my favorite actors, especially Jeremy Irons. Like, and he plays a Jesuit priest. And it's about uh, missionaries who go to uh, um, South America and there's this incredible sequence, and it's beautifully shot all in location, uh, incredible musical score. I mean, you really feel like you're there. It's, it's, it's great, but it takes place in like the mid, I guess, 1700s, and uh, De Niro, Robert De Niro plays this uh, 
Spanish slaver who does something horrible and he wants to, he volunteers for this really horrendous penance to kind of redeem himself. And he, he drags this net of all of his like armor up these mountains and it, it it's really incredible it's a it's a very whatever your faith is or, or not it's a very moving film i would definitely recommend it. It, it it always stuck with me oh and also something that i might rewatch because i really loved it is the netflix uh horror series called midnight mass that was really good so let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books or have seen any of the films I've mentioned, I would love to hear your thoughts. So that's all I have for today. Thanks for stopping by my haunted library and I'll see you soon. Bye.